Hello, my name is Rachel and I'm here today to talk about a book. So that book is The Miseducation of Cameron Post and I'm also going to be talking about the movie. I'm just trying to get comfy because I can't really move in this chair, it's too squeaky. So I need to get like in a good position to discuss. I want to talk about both of them because I watched the film last night and I finished the book the day before yesterday. So everything's quite fresh in my mind and yeah, I just, I feel like I want to discuss, I want to talk about it because I have some feelings. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the book specifically first and I'm just going to say this whole video is just going to be a spoilery thing. I'm not going to do anything that's non-spoilers because I can't be bothered trying to filter myself. So yeah, if you've not seen it, if you don't want to know, just click off this video, that's fine. So The Miseducation of Cameron Post is by Emily M. Danforth and it was published in 2012. I'm pretty sure the film was brought out in 2018. The book is a staple of the like girls liking girls genre, which is what I'm calling it now. I don't like calling it the lesbian genre because there's lots of bisexuals and I don't like bisexual erasure. Girls liking girls genre. And the film did amazingly. I, I don't know specifically how well it did. <laughs> to be honest I'm just saying it did amazingly because I heard about it. I remember it was at Sundance and stuff and I heard a lot about it and I wasn't even living in this country I was living in Switzerland. I just remember it being a big deal. So I was excited to get to it. I started this book ages ago. Anyone's been watching this channel knows that I've been reading this book for years. Maybe I started it for June when it was Pride Month or I was putting it on a TBR because I'd already started it but I remember that I was 50 pages into it for ages and not enjoying it and that's one of the first things I'll say is that the first bit for me wasn't very good but I am going to say specifically that I do not like child narrators and that's what put me off this book. The second she grew up a little bit I got invested so the minute she started talking about being at school and doing swimming lessons and you know the stuff when she was a little bit older was straight on board it was literally just the stuff when she was really young at the beginning that I didn't like as much so in terms of like enjoyment of this book I would say after about 100 pages smooth sailing it's a great book I absolutely adored it so I gave it four stars in the end which is pretty good for a book that I couldn't get myself to read for ages. Reading wise I read about half of it physically, I read this copy and then the last half I listened to on audiobook. The audiobook is amazing, would definitely highly recommend the audiobook. Who is it read by? Beth Laufer. Beth Laufer reads the audiobook on Audible anyway and yeah it was absolutely fantastic so I would highly recommend that. The thing that I really loved about this book is that I didn't hate anyone which was honestly the biggest surprise coming out of this. There are so many situations where I feel like you could have so much hatred for people in this book. So I'm going to go through the people a little bit. So we have Coley who is a girl that she has a relationship with and who is the one who kind of gets her sent to the conversion camp and says like I didn't want this, you manipulated me, blah 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 blah. And I felt like I should hate her but at the same time I was like but she is a person who is terrified and is struggling with this stuff herself and I can kind of understand why she lied to like cover her own back. I could empathise with her as much as she was a bad person for doing that. I found her a very sympathetic character. And then moving forward we had the people who were running the camp and they were so behind what they were selling sort of thing and they'd been products of the camp themselves well one of them had um, and I found him super sympathetic and even Lydia I didn't find myself hating her I was I just it was insane and I just I think it is a testament to this book and these people who are doing these absolutely atrocious things yeah I didn't completely write them off. I found them very three-dimensional and really enjoyed that so would really recommend it in that way. I found it fantastic. I loved that Cameron had a lot of different relationships with girls as well. I think it made it a lot more concrete and it made her conversion that much more difficult because you knew like this isn't something she's experimented with this isn't she, something she's unsure of. She had like kiss boys and stuff and she had you know, kissed and experimented with a lot of women by the time she got to that conversion camp and she knew what she wanted. She was still a little bit confused I'd say but I think she was more confused in the fact that everyone's telling her it's wrong and that's why she was confused because she felt like she was being a bad person or doing something bad. I don't think she was confused because she didn't know in herself what she was, if that makes sense. Um, so I thought that was done 
really really well so i think the reason i really liked this book is that nothing was demonized the police itself wasn't even demonized you were shown it from a really human perspective and i think it makes it even more clear that this is not something that's acceptable even if the people running it believe in it and even if the parents are sympathetic and they want to send you there because they care about you and no matter what the reasons are to send someone to a place like that it's still a bad place and even if you have all of the positives and all of the best intentions and best mindset and all of those things it's still at the heart of it an abysmal thing to do and thing to go through and so I think I just I really enjoyed that I really enjoyed that it wasn't demonized and there's so many scenes that I really really loved in here I loved the scene with Cameron singing I loved the relationship between her and her two friends that she met at the conversion camp I thought their friendship was amazing and I loved that none of them hooked up or anything I feel like there was a bit of tension that was played on in the film between Jane and Cameron and that's not really done in the book they're just friends and it was nice to see them be able to just be friends I mean that's they're basically all my thoughts on this book I really enjoyed it I thought it was a really good book and I would recommend it and we'll talk about the film I'm very angry about the film actually um, I made some notes on my phone not from the beginning i think i got about halfway through and i stayed positive i was like oh okay we're gonna skip everything that happens in all of her character development and just go straight to the camp okay fair enough you do you i'll still give it a try but yeah i got about halfway through and the notes app had to be opened because i was getting angry yeah like i said they delete all of the first half of the book basically which i didn't really like like i said i think it was really good having her have all of these experimental relationships with women throughout so that you had a more concrete view of her and her sexuality by the time she got to the conversion camp. None of the stuff with her family is explored at all and she loves Ruth which I just found insane and I think that crosses through to the entire film. It's this ridiculous simplifying of a story that I think is actually really complex and done really really well and you see it through so many scenes and one of the main scenes where I think you see it is the singing scene so in the book they're doing some cooking and Cameron's like singing along to the radio and it's a really like fun scene you have them yeah just dancing around singing it's very fun and one of the camp people the camp counselor whatever they call them in the book is there with them and he makes a comment to her about how it's the first time he's seen her like let her hair down and actually be part of this camp and it leads to her being able to get some of her privileges and get her mail and that makes so much sense in the film they kind of had this scene but none of the counsellors were there and then this counsellor comes in because they can hear them singing really loudly and she's annoyed and she turns off the radio and takes Cameron and gives her her post as a way to get back at her because she knows what's in her mail and she knows it's going to upset her and I just find it really really irritating because that's not what that scene was and I think that scene was a really beautiful scene. There's this connection that Rick has with these like kids at the camp and with Cameron specifically and that's just completely gone in the film. I feel like they try to put it there but because he is absent from so many of the scenes and they switch it all to being with Lydia instead, it loses that connection that you had and I think that connection is one of the things that made this camp seem so much more like a human error than people just being horrible people, if that makes sense. So that really bothered me and like I said, that's just a thing that happened throughout, just completely simplifying the entire story, the characters. I think Chloe Grace Moretz played Cameron fantastically. I don't think she simplified her in terms of like her herself. There is this kind of thing in the book where she does start to lead into the conversion and she does try and like suppress herself and her desires and she does lean into it and she does seem confused for quite a while and I think she played that perfectly it's just that all of the stuff that built up to that all of the past stuff was lost so that character development didn't seem as authentic or as good because yeah it wasn't all there so obviously I found that annoying her entire like all the stuff with her parents being dead and the connection that she had between her parents death and her first experience of like sexual attraction to a girl that connection 
was a really complicated part of her character development that was gone. We never even find out how her parents died in the film and there isn't this kind of search for the place where her parents died. There's just a much more complex and well done story done in the book and it was just ripped apart for the film and I could try and forgive it but at the same time I'm like you had the source material you, all you had to do was go off the source material it would have been cracking you had the money you had the actors because the actors I think were really good I didn't feel any annoyance towards the actors I found my annoyance was all in the stuff that had been cut and all in the way the film had changed the scenes to kind of have a different theme running through them. That's what bothered me. The actors I think were all perfectly cast and I think they did their jobs really really well. And then the other thing that I found, so when you write a story you should be writing the story from the most interesting person or from someone who's viewing the most interesting person. It's actually quite rare that people don't have the most interesting person as the protagonist. But when it's done right, it can be done really, really right. So like The Great Gatsby, the main character is more like a narrator of Jay Gatsby's life. And you also have that in like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because our protagonist is like the the guy who pretends to be silent and he's more telling us the story and observing. A guy that comes in who's the more interesting character but for the most part with a story you will have the most interesting person be the protagonist because that's the most interesting way to view the story and that was fine like in the book I felt like yeah I, had, I didn't even think about it because she was the most interesting character whereas when I was watching the film I was watching it thinking they've taken so much of her development away that she's actually pretty boring and if this story had been told from one of her two best friends point of view so from the point of view of Jane or I can't remember what the other person's name is but if it had been told from their perspective even if it had been told from like Mark's perspective I found him a really interesting character like in terms of the film it's told from a really boring perspective and I would have much rather had the stories of many of the other characters than I would have Cameron's because Cameron's is so simplified that it's not even an interesting story anymore which made me sad so in terms of but big up Emily M Danforth great writer whoever directed that film and wrote the script for it though would not watch another film that they make to be honest I uh, was really really disappointed for having such good source material I'm so annoyed it was really poorly done so wouldn't recommend the film wouldn't recommend you watching it and yeah they are all my thoughts on the miseducation of Cameron Post book and film if you agreed with me if you disagree with me please let me know in the comments down below and thank you very much for watching I will see you in my next video bye